Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. And I guess one of the big questions that we're kind of really looking at today is where is the bottom in crude oil? Especially considering we're just a hair's breadth away from $30 a barrel on West Texas. And Brent crude is not that far behind it. Uh, we're still seeing a little bit of, <laughs> a little bit of indecision in, uh, in China. They just raised the uh, yuan rate again, trying to stabilize the stock markets. Uh, and a lot of the central bankers from right across the globe have kind of said, we're not gonna intervene. We're just gonna go ahead now and let the markets be efficient and sort themselves out. So traders don't have to keep on second guessing the central bankers. But really what we're seeing just now is a real staunch sell off on uh, the commodity markets right across the globe. Uh, lots, of still, uh, lots of questions still remain around the, uh, the value of the US dollar and interest rate hikes and everything else. And if you are really looking at crude oil as a barometer for uh, the appetite for potential growth uh, in like China and America and everything else, um, it's not really lo looking that good. With crude oil so cheap right now and people having been uh, buying it up and storing it, apparently storage is, uh, is becoming a big scarcity, scarcity right now across the globe. Uh, with crude oil hitting 12 year lows this morning, um, when it breaks $30, you know, that's a big psychological level. And you've had Goldman's and JP Morgan both coming out with saying that sub $20 is possible. So when we look at uh, crude oil in regards to the technicals, the next potential support level is closer to $27. Uh, and there's obviously multiple levels of support until you get all the way down to about 14 and then even $10 uh, after the original um, Desert Storm Gulf conflict back in the 90s. But um, certainly, where can, go, where can crude oil go from here? Uh, well, I can tell you there's been a large number of, of uh, people buying ETFs and uh, trying, to, uh, trying to trade crude oil. Um, and they've been buying crude oil all the way down um, from uh, over $100. And they've been buying it at 60, they've been buying it at 50, and they'll be buying it up at 30 as well. So just consider the fact that we could still see potential, uh, potentially lower values in crude, uh, even with the conflicts going on and um, the proxy conflict going on between uh, Saudi Arabia and Iran. Uh, and a lot of countries are getting hit quite hard by the lower oil price. What is really surprising actually is the resilience of the oil industry to a $30 barrel uh, $30 per barrel uh, crude price because there was a, a, a huge concern that there's been huge lay, uh, massive layoffs all across America um, because of um, not even not even just across America but over uh, the UK and I guess you have impacts in the Middle East and Russia and Venezuela and everything else that the market just couldn't weather that type of storm for very long um, but we've been on a, on a crude slump for what seems like forever and uh, these markets are still doing quite well. Look at the non-farm payrolls report that we had there on Friday uh, with 292,000 new jobs created. You do not see mass redundancies there, but the question is what price point are we going to see a massive knock-on effect? Because it doesn't feel that we've really had this uh, mass uh, exodus of employees from the oil industry yet, but it, it will happen at some point. But what is that sweet spot? I think as when we start to get below $30 and if we begin to get closer to $27, if that actually happens, of course, then there, there, there has to be a, a knock on effect when you get to that level. But people keep on buying it and they think we're gonna be doing it long term and buy and hold for the next five years. But it's a risky strategy, depending how deep your pockets are, of course. So less about, less about crude oil, let's get back on to the rest of the global markets, starting with our old favorite, the US 30. So you can get a bit of a chance to, uh, to see where we are right now. Doji formation that we had yesterday, we were much lower. We rebound higher, capped by that 16,476. We've been uh, negative so far today. Uh, we have been lower, has managed to recover a little bit. CMC Markets clients are currently 72%. Uh, 72% uh, short at the moment. So they're obviously anticipating further downwards momentum. The next potential support could be at 15,000, well, closer to 16,000 to be fair. So that's where we are for the US 30. Uh, the RSI is oversold. The slow stochastic shows further room for maneuver. And the MACD histogram is arguably beginning to accelerate right now as well. So um, we could be looking at this level here as being potential resistance, and this could be your next potential support. 
Moving on to the UK 100 for CMC Marks clients are buying this up, trying to pick the bomb. They are 90% long currently, and that does give you a bit of a flavor of what to expect when you have a look at the support level right here, around about 58.86. We've got one support, two, three, four, five. We had a gap lower yesterday, uh, and we've been slightly above it so far this morning, uh, but it's a tough market. You can see we almost have uh, these tips of these candles being almost exactly the same. It looks to be that 58.86 is gonna be the potential support level, uh, and we'll see how that pans out later on today. Uh, we are trading below both moving averages. MACD histogram is accelerating, and uh, the RSI is not yet oversold, so that shows there could be extra room for further uh, downwards pressure. And the slow stochastic is kind of right in the middle. So from a technical analysis perspective, uh, if we do begin to see a sell-off over in, uh, in Asia again and the US comes off, the UK market is obviously... Um, uh, kind of position for further weakness. Obviously, it's our exposure to the commodity markets that makes the UK 100 um, so particularly vulnerable. So then have a look at Japan 225, very precarious at 17,200. The Japan market, uh, the underlying market did come off a holiday there on Monday. Uh, we are looking at 17,200 as a potential support. You could be looking at the tip of this candle here as being the next potential support, uh, while you look at 16,440 being the next potential support level. 96% of CMC Markets clients by monetary value are currently buyers of the Japan 225. That is a significant level. Then looking at uh, dollar yen, uh, usually a proxy for how the uh, Asian stock markets are doing, but we are in the middle of two ranges right now between 118 spot 33 and 116 spot 80. Uh, the US dollar doesn't really know what it's doing right now. Uh, a rate hike, uh, there's supposed to be three to four rate hikes expected in 2016. I think there's massive question marks over that just now in this market. CMC Markets clients are currently 71% long on this product. Um, and as I mentioned, the potential support level is a little bit further down. We are looking at the tip of this candle here as being that short-term potential support. Let me just kind of move out here a little bit more uh, and you can kind of see where we've been. Actually, dollar yen has been in a sideways moving market for some time, but this is towards the bottom end of the scale. Is when we get towards 116, or worse yet, towards the bottom of this candle right here, that's when the whole makeup for dollar yen changes. And obviously the yen is a safe haven uh, asset. Uh, people will be looking at gold and yen if you begin to see more uncertainty in the market. Let's look at crude oil. And it's, it's crude oil that uh, everybody is really talking about right now. $20.26 at the time of recording this video with the longer term potential support. Let me just go on to my monthly chart here for us to get a chance to see that. You have to go quite far back here to get a real flavor of what's going on. You could be looking at uh, levels much lower than that, even if 27 gets broken. If you wanna get really hardcore, you could go to $17, but it has been lower than that, uh, as I said, back in Desert Storm back in the 90s, where we are hitting about $10 a barrel. The people ask, where is the bottom on crude oil? Well, $10 is probably the bottom uh, on, on crude oil. That gives you, because that's where it's been before. So the question that a lot of traders are, are thinking about, will I buy it now and just hold no matter what happens? Uh, well, depending on, on, on your view, you could obviously go ahead and do that, but there's a lot of pain that you could still have. Considering we just broke, uh, this on the monthly chart, but we just broke that major uh, low that we had at the height of the financial crisis. We're even lower than that now. Um, that should be uh, giving people a lot of cause for concern. And um, certainly if we're looking at $27 as being the next potential support, uh, we are in no man's land right now. There's no other support levels to look at right here. And you're looking at 31.57 as being that potential resistance. Uh, and we're at the bottom end of the range so far this morning. Uh, and everybody's talking about it. Once it breaks $30, I think you're gonna see it on all the major news networks. It's just gone down to 30 spot 24 right now. 94% of CMC Marks clients are long. They're obviously hoping that there's gonna be a turnaround, which of course there could, very, there could obviously be uh, some sort of bounce. But when you're just looking at this trend just now, um, it, it's been feeling the pain for a while. It's down 20% in the last two weeks alone. And that's why everybody's buying it, to be fair. 20% in two weeks is incredible. So moving on to uh, to gold, which is usually that safe haven asset. Even, even gold can't get any luck right now. Gold came off a little bit yesterday. 
Uh, it's not doing a huge amount today. Safe haven assets, the end is probably where most traders are looking at based on where the charts are moving. From a technical analysis perspective, the MACD's crossed the zero line. The other technicals are neutral. We're above both moving averages. CMC market clients are 50-50 on gold right now. And when you look at a chart like this, there's just not a huge amount happening. So the yellow metal is not one of my favorites right now. Euro dollar is also a bit of a tough one to kind of gauge right now. Um, CMC clients are 79% short by monetary value. We could be in a kind of a, a descending triangle formation here if we hadn't already have broken out. One spot 0820 uh, is a level that's been strategically important on this, pro on this uh, FX pair. You can see it was important here. Uh, we had a breakout here. It uh, worked as a potential resistance. Then we had another breakout, support, support, technical breakout, and then we're back into support as well. And we could be in a sloping trend line right here, which would form this kind of descending triangle formation. The other technicals are flattening out. Um, now, if this is a triangle formation, you would expect that it would trade within the triangle. For traders out there, you obviously don't want to trade inside the triangle. You want to wait for the potential breakout if that's what's happening. But it's, it's getting a bit tougher uh, to, to gauge which direction euro dollar is going to go. Uh, ultimately, if, if they're not going to raise interest rates in, in the US anytime soon, you would think that that would have uh, that people would begin to reposition their dollar position, their dollar view. Uh, but then it's not like the euro is super strong as well. People are talking about is are, are the eurozone is the eurozone going to reduce rates as well to combat uh, the economic slowdown in China? So big question marks over that. But seems to market clients are confident of a move down seventy nine percent short. So GBP USD, the only level that's really worth talking about is one spot 4568, which is a low right here, which we have broken. Uh, and we broke that um, on Thursday and Friday. Uh, we had we tried to get back above it yesterday. Uh, we had a failure to do so. We're on the down, we're on the bottom end of that range so far this morning. The next potential support is all the way down at one spot 4230. If I go into my weekly chart, let's see if we can see that. You, that gives you a flavor of where we are. So one spot 4230 and one spot 3510. Uh, those are the main support levels to be aware of. CMC clients, 86% short. So they are uh, pretty confident. And this is on the weekly chart. It just get, it gives you the chance to see that, uh, that that kind of move that we had yesterday got pushed back down again. Until we get above back above one spot 45 uh, and, and change back above this potential resistance level, uh, the bears will be out on uh, cable. So not a lot of love. We're almost getting oversold right now. The RSI and the slow, st slow stochastic just about to go into that area of, uh, of an early warning signal, but the signal to buy uh, has not yet been given. So that gives you a bit of an idea of what to expect. So I'm just gonna very quickly get my uh, market calendar out as well. This is for, uh, for today. Uh, we do have uh, some Chinese data due later on. Uh, that's four o'clock UK time. And uh, then you also do have your industrial production at, at 9.30 UK time for Tuesday. And then fast forward onto Wednesday. Overnight, we do have some more uh, Chinese data. So be aware of that. And then we have some, uh, some Asian data as well from Japan. And we've got, of course, crude oil inventories. That's going to be quite an important one. I think for Wednesday. So that gives you a bit of an idea of what to expect. Well, guys, thank you very much for, uh, for watching. Very good luck with your trading and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next. Thank you very much and goodbye.